honoured guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Koyamura Mulweni. Welcome to the summer graduation season of Nelson Mandela University. Today, we will be celebrating the academic su success of more than 106 postgraduates and 26 doctorates. Please, could we request the following? First, that the audience please rise when the academic procession enters the hall and remain standing until after the moment of silence and again at the end of the ceremony after the singing of the national anthem as the academic procession leaves the hall. Two, that you please ensure your cell phones are on silent for the duration of the ceremony. However, we encourage you to please tweet during the ceremony, the hashtag is hashtag MandelaGrad. I'll repeat that, hashtag MandelaGrad. And tell your family and friends that the event is being live streamed. Third, that you do not leave the hall during the procession out of respect for all our graduates and their families who have worked tirelessly to achieve their postgrad qualifications. Finally, please note that in the event of load shedding, we have a standby generator. Remain seated as the generator will start within minutes. We trust that you will enjoy the ceremony and a hearty word of congratulations to each and every graduate on this, your very special day.
Ladies and gentlemen, we request that you join us in a moment of silence as we remember those who made this graduation journey possible and those who are no longer with us. Please be seated and thank you. By virtue of the powers vested in me as Chancellor of the Nelson Mandela University, I hereby constitute this congregation for the purpose of awarding qualifications. I want to break with the customary start of the graduation ceremony and simply recognize that at 12 o'clock today, there'll be a minute of silence for accountability to end gender-based violence and femicide. And this call is from concerned women from Saweet calling on all South Africans to observe a silent minute to hold government accountable for failing to fulfill its obligation to, towards ending gender-based violence and femicide. I'd like you to call you all to stand, please. Thank you. The reason I did that now is because we don't want to break in our proceedings, but we do want to recognize and join those and the media as they um, have this shared minute of silence. Chair of Council, Ambassador Nozipo January Badal, Deputy Chair of Council, Ms. Michelle Mbato, all members of our Council present, Vice Chancellor Vice Chancellor Professor Sibongile Mutwa, Deputy Vice Chancellors executive deans, registrar, the professoriate, members of the academy, and university staff members. President and members of the Student Representative Council, president of the Alumni Association and alumni, members of the media, university partners, and stakeholders from government, the faith sector, civil society, communities, and business. And most importantly, the students who are joining us today at this uh, graduation 
ceremony. Good morning, Molweni, Guyamora. I'd like to welcome you to this ceremony, and in this instance, we will be graduating 120 postgraduate students at our 2022 graduation ceremony. And without a doubt, your graduation ceremony is taking place at a time of global and national complexity. What are we witnessing? High inflation, unfortunately reversal of the gains made in poverty eradication, in addressing hunger and providing high quality education. And then on top of it, we are confronted with war. I wish I had better news, but that's the reality. We are confronted with the direct implications for Agenda 2063 and Agenda 2030 and the shrinking fiscal space for all developing countries. Under these circumstances, the issue of governance effective, transparent, accountable, is even more important." Close quotes. These were the words of Mr. Nav Navid Hanif, the Assistant Secretary General of the UN, when he spoke in Cape Town in October 2022. And he advised, and I quote, the global environment is not conducive to pursuing development and advancing the objectives agreed to in Agenda 2030 and Agenda 2063. We're clearly confronting a time of multiple complexity. I do, however, want to quote President Abumbeki, when he said, gloom and despondency has never defeated adversity. Trying times need courage and resilience. Our strength as a people is not tested during the best of times. We should never become despondent because the, bad, bad, because the weather is bad, nor should we turn triumphalist because the sun shines. Close quotes. And this is because of people like yourselves. The academy in this room, as well as the students and parents and the community. So to the students, I want to say, the graduates, You've spent many years with us at the Mandela University as students, some of you as undergraduates and then as postgraduates. Now you're about to embark on an exciting new chapter in your lives. And hence, as stated by President Thabo Mbeki, we do not accept that human society should be constructed on the basis of a savage principle of the survival of the fittest, because you will make a difference. And this could be studying further or entering the job market. From the university's perspective, we, are we would like to believe that you are entering this new phase of your lives especially for those of you who will be starting with your career with more than a first-class qualification. Throughout what we hope has been a life-changing educational experience at Nelson Mandela University, we've been at pains to ensure that you leave here with certain attributes. 
over and above your excellent disciplinary knowledge. And we will hear this through the citations that's available and read that for both the masters and the doctoral students. We believe that there are certain attributes that will enable you to succeed anywhere in the world. We've endeavored to inculcate these traits to help you become a responsible global citizen. The graduate attributes we aspire to inculcate are intellectual curiosity and critical thinking, being responsible agents of change, professionalism and integrity, resilience and adaptive expertise, and innovative, solution-driven creativity. As an institution which strives to be in the service of society, we expect our graduates to display social consciousness and responsible citizenship wherever they go and whatever they do. As graduates of Nelson Mandela University, you are called upon to be champions for equality, equity, humanity, diversity, and social justice. I am pleased to say that it's not only Nelson Mandela University that recognizes the value of these attributes, but employers in the marketplace too. Many employers especially seek out our graduates for these reasons. The characteristics or traits that set Mandela, Mandela University graduates apart from our alumni from other institutions of higher learning. According to the 2022 findings of the, of the International Universum Talent Research Survey, which looks at education and career readiness, found that the dominant career types the Mandela University graduates surveyed were as groundbreakers, globe trotters, and change makers. The students surveyed rated our university's reputation highly for e educational excellence driving change in society, and driving innovation and or, or entrepreneurship. This is especially important when you consider the words of the Assistant Secretary General uh, Navat, as well as the reality of the triple challenge of poverty, inequality, and unemployment of our society. I know that it's not always easy to become economically productive citizens. Youth unemployment, including graduate unemployment, is a reality in our country. But studies show that a qualification, especially a postgraduate qualification, increases your chances of finding employment. The 2022 quarter two labor survey by Stats Essay indicated that of the incredible number of 8 million unemployed persons in the second quarter of 2022 in South Africa, only 2.4% of unemployed persons were graduates while another 7% had other tertiary qualifications as their highest level of education. I hope you do not find yourselves in that situation and that all of you are either employed, running your own businesses, or studying further. Wherever you find yourselves, we are proud of your achievements in graduating here today. And thank you for choosing Nelson Mandela University. 
Graduation is not the end of your relationship with Mandela University. Instead, it marks the beginning of a different type of relationship as we, we welcome you all as alumni, Nelson Mandela University. We would like to, all, to stay in touch with all of you at our university, and we want you to stay in touch with the university through the Alumni Association, and where possible, plow back as much as you can to the next generation of students following it in your footsteps, be it through mentoring, contributing to a bursary, or being active in the alumni situation, uh, association. In whatever sphere of life you find yourself, please do your alma mater proud by making a difference. It's through graduates such as yourselves that Nelson Mandela University will achieve its ambition of changing the world. Let me, let me pause a moment, and all graduates, let's cast our eyes on our families, our community, our larger support network. At the end of the day, whether you studied, you did your master's or doctoral, uh, postdoctoral studies, it was with support of someone in the room or outside the room that made this journey possible. I'm sure there were times during your studies where you thought, do I have to? And you decided you would, and they supported you as well. Let's give them a round of applause for that. And at this point, I would like to conclude with words from our namesake, President Nelson Mandela. He said, and I quote, as Africans, we need to share common recognition that all of us stand to lose if we, or if we fail to, um, sorry, I was quoting another president of ours. So let me conclude that and come to President Nelson Mandela. Um, this was President Mbeki, where he said, as Africans, we need to share common recognition that all of us stand to lose if we fail to transform our continent. President Nelson Mandela said, and I leave these words with you, no country can really develop unless its citizens are educated. Any nation that is progressive is led by people who have the privilege of studying. Close quotes. You've had the privilege of studying. Ensure that you lead in all sectors of society because you will and can make a difference. As you cross the stage today to be capped, at the end of walking across, pause, take a bow for yourselves, for your family, for your community, for our country and our continent. Thank you very much, everyone.
another round of applause. We shall now, honored guests, proceed with the awarding of qualifications, and I now request the candidates present in the hall to take up their positions. I request the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Business and Economic Sciences, Professor Hendrik Loy, to present the candidates for the respective qualifications. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the master's degrees on the candidates who have completed their respective qualifications during the past academic year. I confer the master's degrees as requested.
Madam Chancellor, a candidate for the degree Master of Philosophy in Maritime Studies coursework, Sandile Ntembu. Madam Chancellor, candidates for the degree Master of Business Administration coursework, Spiwe Tlamini. <laughs> Christy Dix. <laughs> Ryan Gallant, cum laude. Bongo Giose. <clears throat> Unati Classy. <clears throat> Patrick Ntete. Lynn O'Reilly. <clears throat> Madam Chancellor, candidates for the degree Master of Commerce in Search, Tolile Baka Cum Laude. Ville Koza. <clears throat> Sipusetu Ngjima, cum laude. <clears throat> Oyeye Cheku, Olisa. Tariru Shumba Cum Laude. Zezetu Zandile. Madam Chancellor, this concludes the conferring of master's degrees in the Faculty of Business and Economic Sciences. I request the Acting Dean Thank you. I request the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Engineering, the Built Environment and Technology, Professor De Rauw van Grienen, to present the candidates for the respective qualifications. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the master's degrees on the candidates who have completed their respective qualifications during the past academic year. I confer the master's degrees as requested. Madam Chancellor, candidates for the degree Master of Engineering Research, Edwin Tebojo Rebesi.
Madam Chancellor, a candidate for the degree Master of Information Technology Research, and Khulisi Mchabe. Madam Chancellor, a candidate for the degree Master of Philosophy in Information Technology, Governance, Ulandi Exner. Madam Chancellor, a candidate for the degree Master of Science in Construction Management Research, Ryan Greg Ardendorf. <clears throat> Madam Chancellor, candidates for the degree Master of Science in the Built Environment coursework, Ruan Ferreira. Kirsty King. <clears throat> Mofumatsane Moku Kenyane. <clears throat> Sipukazi Kusheka. Sivu Yise Wana Sibule Kushle Kulaba. Madam Chancellor, this concludes the conferring of master's degrees in the Faculty of Engineering, the Built Environment and Technology. I request the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Education, Dr. Mukim Wing, to present the candidates for the respective qualifications. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the master's degrees on candidates who have completed their respective qualifications during the past academic year. I confer the master's degrees as re requested. Madam Chancellor, 
candidates for the degree Master of Education Research. Nadima Mustan, cum laude. Tracy Newton, cum laude. Nobesutu Rani Sondi, cum laude. Madam Chancellor, this concludes the conferring of master's degrees in the Faculty of Education. I request the Acting Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences, Professor Zoleka Soji, to present the candidates for the respective qualifications. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the master's degree on the candidates who have completed their respective qualifications during the past academic year. I confer the master's degrees as requested. Madam Chancellor, candidates for the degree Master of Arts in Counseling Psychology. Sorry. 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 Madam, Madam Chancellor, candidates for the degree, Master of Arts in Psychology Research, Nolufefe Guahubana. Nonjabulo Fortunate Ngasa. Madam Chancellor, candidates for the degree Master of Human Movement Science. Madam Chancellor, Quentin Christian Potriter, who tragically passed away in a car accident, was a candidate for the degree Master of Human Movement Sciences Research. I request you to confer the degree posthumously. I request the congregation to stand. The degree will be received by his father, Mr. Potriter. I confer the degree posthumously on Quinton Christian Potriter.
Madam Chancellor, candidates for the degree Master of Nursing coursework, Karen Ruth Moss. Tembisa Noche. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, a candidate for the degree Master of Pharmacy, cum laude, on Carol May Swanepo. Madam Chancellor, a candidate for the degree of Master of Social Work Research, Sipokazi Chefuma Vimbela. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, a candidate for the degree Master of Technology, Radiography Research, Annelisa Zulu. Madam Chancellor, this concludes the conferring of master's degree, degrees in the Faculty of Health Sciences. I request the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Humanities, Professor Pamela Maseko, to present the candidates for the respective qualifications. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the master's degree on candidates who have completed their respective qualifications during the past academic year. I confer the master's degrees as requested. Madam Chancellor, candidates for the degree Master of Arts. Onjiswa Erika Hela Tanyana. <laughs> Master of Arts and Media Studies Research, Lufuno Charity Manuadu. Master of Arts in English Research, Tinotenda Blessing Mutsambi. <laughs> Master of Arts, Political Studies Research, Mbasa Mvenene. Master of Arts, Sociology Research, Batlafi Julius Nkhontwe. <laughs> Master of Arts, Kanyisa Zime, that they were Bobonke in Tsundwana. Yeah. 
Master of Arts, Sociology Research, Ryan McPillay. Master of Arts in Conflict Transformation and Management, Sediko Daniel Rakulute. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, a candidate for the degree Master of Music Research, Kasirwe Matthias Batandwa. Madam Chancellor, this concludes the, conferen the conferring of master's degrees in the Faculty of Humanities. I request the Acting Executive Dean of the Faculty of Law, Dr. Lynn Biggs, to present the candidates for the respective qualifications. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the master's degrees on candidates who have completed their respective qualifications during the past academic year. I confer the master's degrees as requested. Madam Chancellor, candidates for the degree Master of Laws coursework. Sorry, sorry, thank you. Ms. Siza Lupondwana. <laughs> Bonolo Mafa. Temben Kosi Ndude. Sipotolo Somandi. Bulalane Witi. Madam Chancellor, candidates for the degree Master of Laws Research. Dudzai Kuture. <laughs> Ruth Mko. Madam Chancellor, this concludes the conferring of master's degrees in the Faculty of Law.
I request the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Science, Professor Aswindini Muronga, to present the candidates for the specific qualifications. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the master's degrees on candidates who have completed their respective qualifications during the past academic year. I confer the master's degrees as requested. Madam Chancellor, candidates for the degree Master of Science Research. Isabella Aleta Betty. Tembani Nkize. Lizalise Nele. Landile Mondil. So Vikile Singata Kum Laude. Nathan Smith. <laughs> Emily Whitfield, cum laude. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, Candidates for the degree Master of Science in Nanoscience. Nereshini Reddy, cum laude. Madam Chancellor, this concludes the conferring of master's degrees in the Faculty of Science. Madam Chancellor, I now have the privilege to present to you candidates for the doctoral degrees in the Faculty of Science. I request Professor Ernest van Dijk and the candidate Melisha Jivanji to come forward, please. Madam Chancellor, I request Professor Ernest van Dijk, the acting head of department, to present her to the congregation on behalf of the supervisor. Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, I present to the congregation Melisha Javanji, a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Physics, with her thesis entitled, The Effect of Binder Additives in the Thermal Stability of Polycrystalline Diamond. Polycrystalline diamond composites find extensive use as an abrasive material. 
However, it rapidly degrades after exposures to temperatures above 800 degrees Celsius. This study focused on developing a better understanding of the high temperature degradation mechanisms present in polycrystalline diamond materials. Advanced anal analytical techniques were used to assess the effectiveness of selected binder additions on high temperature behavior of polycrystalline diamond. The study found the primary mechanism of thermal instability in polycrystalline diamond is caused by chemically induced graphitization and is influenced strongly by the chemistry of the binder phase. These learnings could, follow, could allow for the design of novel polycrystalline diamond materials with improved performances. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Physics, on Melisha Givang. I confer, I confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Physics, on Melisha Jivanji. Madam Chancellor, I request candidate Monfias Bumbogwa to come forward, please. Madam Chancellor, I request Professor Ernest van Dijk, the supervisor of the candidate, to present him to the congregation. Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, I present to the congregation Monfius von Bugwa, a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Physics with his thesis entitled Investigation of Thermal and Electrical Characteristics of Crystalline Silicon Photovoltaic Modules Under Varying Operational Conditions. Large utility-scale photovoltaic PV plants have become commonplace globally and also in South Africa. Thermal infrared imaging is used to locate defective PV cells and modules to ensure optimum performance. This study focused on thermal imaging of crystalline silicon PV cells, modules, and arrays used, used in conjunction with the associated characterization tools to analyze, analyze the defects and power loss in PV systems. The work showed the dynamic nature of thermal anomalies observed when using thermal imaging. Detailed analysis showed how different defects behave under different environmental and operational conditions. The work has been published and also presented at several conferences nationally and internationally. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Physics, on Monfias Bumbogwa.
I confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Physics on Monfius Vumbukwa. I request Dr. Nomakwezi Mzilikazi and candidate Stacy Lee Webb to come forward, please. Madam Chancellor, I request Dr. Nomakwezi Mzilikazi, the supervisor of the candidate, to present her to the congregation. Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, I present to the congregation Stacy Lee Webb, a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Zoology. With her thesis entitled, the mold and energetics in three species from the Euplictus genus representing a gradient of elaborate plumage orientation. Elaborate plumage orientation and its role in sexual selection in birds has fascinated scientists since the early 1800s. In this study, a variety of methods ranging from parochrinology and reflectance spectroscopy to the analysis of long-term data sets were used to investigate the physiological costs associated with breeding, production, and maintenance of elaborate and costly ornamentation in three naturally acclimatized, closely related species with different degrees and types of ornamental plumage. It is a novel study of the ecophysiology of ornamental plumage in birds and contributes to our understanding of the complexity of costs and potential trade-offs resulting from ornamental plumage and sexual selection. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Zoology, on Stacy Lay Webb. I confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Zoology on Stacy Lee Webb. I request Professor Brenda Scholz and candidate Kolekani Yakovi to come forward, please. Madam Chancellor, I request 
Professor Brenda Scholz, the supervisor of the candidate, to present him to the congregation. Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, I present to the congregation Kulikani Yakobi, a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Information Systems, with his thesis entitled A Social Media Analytics Framework for Decision-Making in the Context of Citizen Relationship Management. The study developed a framework that provides guidelines, methods, and tools for incorporating social media analytics into decision-making for citizen relationship management. The pragmatic philosophy was used to generate an in-depth, multifaceted understanding of the status of social media analytics in three cases. Focus group discussions with government decision-makers and an analysis of tw Twitter data in the three cases were conducted. The tweets analyzed related to the COVID-19 and vaccination perceptions of citizens. The findings revealed that the strategies for SMA in all of the cases were comprehensive. Two of the implementations were still in the early stages, while one government department successfully used SMA to identify trends in COVID-19 and to respond and adjust service delivery accordingly. Common challenges to SMA were data trust and accessibility issues, lack of skills, tools, and budget. The framework provided a novel contribution that can provide governments with guidance for SMA adoption to facilitate decision-making, transparency, and accountability of service delivery. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Information Systems, on Kulekani Yakobi. I confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Information Systems on Kulikani Yakobi. Madam Chancellor, this concludes the conferring of qualifications in the Faculty of Science. I now request the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Business and Economic Sciences Professor Hendrik Loy to present the candidates for the doctoral degrees. Madam Chancellor, I have the privilege to present to you candidates for the doctoral degrees in the Faculty of Business and Economic Sciences. I request Dr. Jessica Fraser and candidate Yusuf Adam to come forward, please. Madam Chancellor, I request Dr. Jessica Fraser, the supervisor of the candidate, to present him to the congregation.
Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, I present to the congregation Yusuf Adam, a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Business Administration with the thesis entitled Investigating Various Product Derivatives for a Sustainable of Feed Supply Chain in Contemporary aquaculture practices adversely impact the environment, economy, and society due to unsustainable fish farming and applied feed systems. This study investigated alternative production systems and aquaculture feed ingredients which mimic natural marine ecosystem food supply chains. Integrated multitrophic aquaculture was found to result in more sustainable ecosystem management practices. The study also identified future alternative aquaculture feed ingredients to substitute the unsustainable application of fish meal and fish oil as key ingredients. By surveying industry stakeholder perceptions on alternative product derivatives, the call for sustainably produced aquaculture feed can now inform sustainable supply chain management and marine ecosystem stewardship. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree of Doctor of Business Administration on Yusuf Adam. Congratulations. I confer the degree of Doctor of Business Administration on Yusuf Adam. I request Professor Houdini Fouri and candidate Tracy Geraldine Beck to come forward, please. Madam Chancellor. I request Professor Houdini Fouri, the supervisor of the candidate, to present her to the congregation. Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, I present to the congregation Tracy Geraldine Beck, a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Accounting, with the thesis entitled An Integrated Training and Client Services Guide Framework for Professional Accountants of SMEs. The study commenced with an extensive literature review after which it was identified that a need exists to determine whether SME clients of professional accountants desire more from their accountants than what the professional accountants are educated and trained to offer. Whether professional accountants provide the services that their SME clients desire and whether SMEs are aware of the services Emanating from the extensive literature review, the primary objective of the study was to pro propose an integrated training and client service guidance framework for professional accountants of SMEs, an interpretivist research paradigm and a qualitative methodological approach were used to conduct the research. Data were collected through interviews with participants from the two participant groups, the professional accountants and the SME clients. Based on key findings, a framework addressed 
the primary research objective was developed. The framework provides guidance in respect of the knowledge, skills, competencies, and practical experience that a professional accountant should obtain during the various phases of education and training. The study concluded that professional accountants must effectively communicate and market their services to current as well as prospective SME clients to ensure that clients are aware of the potential services which can be provided or obtained from a trusted expert. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Accounting on Tracy Geraldine Beck. I confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy Accounting on Tracy Geraldine Beck. I request Professor Rolf van Niekerk and candidate Vicky Boetes to come forward, please. Madam Chancellor, I request Professor Rolf van Niekerk, the supervisor of the candidate, to present her to the congregation. Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, I present to the congregation Vicky Boetes, a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Industrial Psychology with her thesis entitled Lawrence Kohlberg, A Psychobiography. Lawrence Kohlberg lived between 1927 and 1987 and is known for his groundbreaking research on moral development. The candidate formulated an intriguing psychological biography of this extraordinary individual who committed suicide by walking into the ocean at the age of 59 years. The aims of this study were to illuminate Kohlberg's life story through formulating a contextualized description of his life history, interpreting the life story of Kohlberg according to a comprehensive theory of human development, informally evaluating the appropriateness of this theoretical framework, and contributing to the growing field of psychobiographical research in South Africa. The research concluded that Kohlberg was, pa was a passionate, driven individual who dedicated his life to morality and moral education, sacrificing other areas in his life for this cause. Further, the use of the particular theoretical framework was effective in illuminating Kohlberg's life story, illustrating how complex and multifaceted development is. The candidate formulated theoretical and practical recommendations for the use of the particular theoretical framework in psychobiographical research. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Industrial Psychology on Vicky Boetes.
I confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Industrial Psychology on Vicky Buetus. I request Professor Ronin Kwadi and candidate Asanda Fotoi to come forward, please. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, I request Professor Ronin Kwadi the supervisor of the candidate to present her to the congregation. Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, I present to the congregation Asanda Fotoy, a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Economics, with a thesis entitled Economic Impact Assessment of the National Youth Development Agency, NYDA, grant funding in the Eastern Cape. The National Youth Development Agency Grant funding provides young South African entrepreneurs with an opportunity to assess both financial and non-financial business support. This thesis examined the effectiveness of the NYDA grant funding in the Eastern Cape using cost-benefit analysis and least absolute deviation regression models on a sample size of 253 respondents. The study found that public investment towards youth entrepreneurship through NYDA grant funding was economically viable during the period under review. The study further found that the development of youth entrepreneurship should go beyond just NYDA grant funding to include favorable policies towards closing gender gaps, supportive education systems, as well as ensuring diverse economic sectors. The findings of the study suggest that the government should continue with its public investment towards youth entrepreneurship under the conditions of a growing and developing economy. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Economics on Sanda Fotoy. I confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Economics on Asanda Fotoi. I request candidate Nicoline Melanie Desiree Haman to come forward, please. Madam Chancellor, I request Professor Ronnie Inquadi 
the director of the school to present her to the congregation on behalf of the supervisor. Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the supervisor, Professor Andrew Piri, I present to the congregation Nicolene Bellini Desri Harman, a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Economics, with a thesis entitled Using Nighttime Light Data as a Measure of Gross Domestic Product in Sub Saharan Africa. High spatial resolution satellite imagery offers a unique view of the Earth's surface from outer space and can be used in a multidisciplinary way to benefit countries and the global economy for spatial distribution purposes. This study, therefore, implored the Defense Meteorological Satellite Program Operational Line Scan System, night land, uh, nighttime lights, time series in all its facets to detect and establish if nighttime lights can serve as a useful measure, measurement proxy for economic performance and well-being. Overall findings indicate that light intensity is a poor proxy for economic activity and well-being due to conflicting results derived from the different estimation techniques employed in the study. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Economics on Nicoline Melanie Desiree Haman. I confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Economics on Nicoline Melanie Desiree Haman. I request candidate Boliswa Matankenya to come forward, please. <laughs> Madam Chancellor. I request Professor Ronin Kwadi, the supervisor of the candidate, to present her to the congregation. Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, I present to the congregation Williswa Matekenya, a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Economics, with a thesis entitled Macroeconomic Impact of Ocean Economy Financing in South Africa. The study examined macroeconomic impact of ocean economy financing in South Africa during the period 1994 to 2019, the study employed autoregressive distributed legs econometric model to examine long and short run relationships. The results show that ocean economy financing in South Africa during the period under review had a positive relationship with economic growth and a negative relationship with unemployment, albeit that the latter is statistically insignificant. Further, ocean economy financing had a statistically significant negative relationship with entrepreneurship and a positive relationship with total trade. The findings of this study suggest that ocean economy financing is economically viable, and it is for this reason that the government should continue investing in ocean economy in order to address any constraints that hinder growth and sustainability of the country's ocean economy. In order to ensure that economic viability of ocean economy financing, four areas need attention, namely economic growth, entrepreneurship, job creation, and total trade. This study recommends a comprehensive growth strategy that looks beyond ocean economy. With respect to entrepreneurship, ease of doing business should be improved. The requisite skills through human capital investment should be harnessed in order to ensure 
decent and sustainable jobs in ocean sector. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Economics on Waliswa Matankenya. I confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Economics on Veliswa Matakenya. Madam Chancellor, I request Dr. Nuluntu Jubele to come forward, please. The candidate, Salmon Mugoda, can't be here today, but he's watching online with his family, and therefore we would like to read his citation also. Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, I present to the congregation Salmon Mugoda in absentia, a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Economics, with his thesis entitled, The Contribution of Small, Micro, and Medium Enterprises, SMMEs, to Local Economic Development of Bukedi Subregion, Uganda. The contribution of SMEs to local economic development of Bukedi was investigated. The findings indicate that whereas the SME sector has grown over time, its contribution is marginal as poverty rates continue to soar. The meager contribution of SMEs has been the provision of pseudo-employment, especially for the uneducated and low-skilled workers. To accelerate LED, the clarion call is for government to become solution-orientated and mitigate obstacles facing business. Additionally, there is a need to pay attention to local economic activities in Bukendi. They have to be holistically and strategically linked with any LED efforts. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Economics on Salman Mugada in absentia. I confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Economics on Salman Magoda in absentia. I request Professor Progress Hova Sibanda and candidate Sheikrod Munua to come forward, please. Madam Chancellor, I request Professor Progress Hova Sebande to the supervisor of the candidate to introduce him to the congregation. Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, I present to the congregation Sheikharod Manuha, 
a candidate for the degree Doctor of Philosophy Logistics with his thesis entitled a Stakeholder Framework for Sustainable Supply Chain Management in the Zimbabwean Food Industry. The study employed a six concurrent needs method approach to explore the influence of sustainable food supply chain um, management drivers, practices, and key stakeholders' dynamic capabilities on SFSCM performance in the Zimbabwean food industry. The study used both thematic analysis, descriptive analysis, and structural equation modeling for the analysis. The findings of the study suggest that SFSCM drivers and STCs should be considered to boost SFSCM performance through SFSCM practices. The study developed an, a sustainable food supply chain management stakeholder framework uh, to address and redress food insecurity issues through supply chain management. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy Logistics on Sheikrod Nua. I confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Logistics on Sheikrod Nua. I request Professor Ronin Huari and candidate Raimi Rasak to come forward, please. Madam Chancellor, I request Professor Ronin Huari the director of the school to introduce him to the congregation on behalf of the supervisor. Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Professor Piri, the supervisor, I present to the congregation Raimi Rasak, a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Economics, with his thesis entitled Different Dimensions of Inequality and Sustainable Economic Growth in Africa. The study re-examined the relationship between inequalities and sustainable growth using recent African data between the periods of 1998 to 2020. Parametric and non-parametric econometric techniques were applied, and results from the analysis indicate an inverse relationship between inequalities and sustainable growth. Contrarily, positive results were found for income inequality. The study concludes that economic growth has been helping in bridging inequalities with the uh, exemption of income inequality. Also, it is evident that economic growth alone is not adequate to close inequality gap in Africa. The study recommends uh, developmental efforts uh, to be intensified in order to reach everyone to fight poverty across the continent. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Economics on Raimi Rasak.
I confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Economics on Raimi Rasa. I request Professor Bernadette Snow and candidate Risa Dorothy van Royen to come forward, please. Madam Chancellor, I request Professor Bernadette Snow, the supervisor of the candidate, to introduce her to the congregation. Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, it is with pleasure that I present to the congregation Risa Dorothea van Royen, a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Development Studies with her thesis entitled, Exploring and Contextualizing the Predominant Coastal and Marine Environmental Worldviews of the Millennial South Africans. Through a four-phase exploratory research design, the study explores the theoretical basis of environmental worldviews within a sustainability discourse. Based upon the four phases, a coastal and marine environmental worldview profile is developed and discussed for a sample of millennial South Africans. It is identified that various contextual factors influence the formation of coastal and marine environmental worldviews and their expression in behaviors. The study provides a theoretical model and contextual framework from which coastal and marine environmental worldviews can be studied in the South African context for inclusion within proactive environmental worldview strategies. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy Development Studies on Risa Dorothy van Rooyen. I confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Development Studies on Risa Dorothea van Rooyen. Madam Chancellor, this concludes the conferring of qualifications in the Faculty of Business and Economic Sciences. I now request the Acting Executive Dean of the Faculty of Engineering, Built Environment and Technology, Professor De Ralph van, R van Grienen, to present the candidates for the doctoral degrees.
Madam Chancellor, I have the privilege to present to you candidates for the doctoral degrees in the Faculty of Engineering, the Built Environment and Technology. I request Professor Brunk Boeta and candidate Kulekani Takana to come forward, please. Madam Chancellor, I request Professor Brink Boerta, the co-supervisor of the candidate, to present him to the congregation. Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of myself, Professor Shukula Mbanga and Professor Arian, it is my honor to present Kululakane Intakana, to the congregation with his thesis entitled Urban Space Production and Sustainable Development, a case of Waterfall City in Gauteng, South Africa. This research aimed at examining factors that influenced urban space production to generate a responsive model, referred to in the study as the IUSP model. It also aimed to examine the role of the state and other stakeholders involved in the production of urban space, including the private sector and the community. The study demonstrated a concurrent mixed method design. Results from the two concurrent approaches were merged to yield the final model. This model aims to assist policymakers, planners, designers, landscapers, and developers as a guideline for facilitating inclusive and sustainable urban development. Thank you. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Construction Management on Kulelekani Takana. I confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Construction Management on Kululekane Takana. I now request Professor Theo von Niekerk and candidate Alexander Blair Stewart McFarlane to come forward, please. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, I request Professor Theo von Niekerk the supervisor of the candidate to present him to the congregation. Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, I present Alexander Blair Stewart McFarlane to the congregation with his thesis entitled Modular Omnidirectional AGV Developmental Platform with Integrated Suspension Power Plant and Control Systems an automated guided vehicle, or AGV, is a machine that can self-navigate. The research goal for this thesis was not only to create a self-navigating vehicle, but a holonomic 
omnidirectional one. This flexibility allows the AGV to operate in a traditional factory designed around human ergonomics and not machine kinematics. Soil safety compliance ensures the AGV can act as a collaborative robot working directly with humans rather than locked robotic cells separated from people. An entirely new drive system had to be invented to achieve cost-effective omnidirectionality. This came in the form of a two-wheeled swerve drive system, with two being unconstrained casters. Four-wheeled swerve drives, AGVs, where all four wheels are powered, is common within the academic space, but they've realized only limited usage in industry. Therefore, through this research project, the candidate made it possible to implement the previously cost prohibited system into an industrial acceptable standard and setting for the first time. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Engineering Megatronics on Alexander Blair Stewart McFarlane. confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Engineering Metatronics uh, on Alexander Blair Stewart McFarlane. Madam Chancellor, this concludes the conferring of qualifications in the Faculty of Engineering, the Built Environment and Technology. I now request the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Education, Dr. Muki Mweng, to present the candidates for the doctoral degrees. Madam Chancellor, I have the privilege to present to you candidates for the doctoral degrees in the Faculty of Education. I request Professor Anas Bayaga and candidate Hodi Elias Tamago to come forward, please. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, I request Professor Bayaga, to, the supervisor of the candidate, to present him to the congregation. Thank you. Um, Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, I present Hudi Elias Chamango to the congregation with his thesis entitled Developing metacognition through the use of technology in self-organized learning environments in grade 11 physical sciences. Um, a mixed methods approach was used in this study to investigate the effects of self-organized learning environments, pedagogy on learners' metacognitive skills and understanding of physical sciences concepts. According to this study, using SOULS, uh, which is an acronym to self-organized uh, learning environment pedagogy. 
significantly enhances learners' metacognitive skills, as well as their conceptual understanding. The study makes a substantial contribution in the attempt to find effective pedagogies that integrate the teaching of metacognitive skills and technology to improve learners' conceptual understanding. Thank you. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Education on Hodi Elias Tsamago. I confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Education, on Hodi Elias Tsamako. I request Professor Anas Bayaga and candidate Sipokazi Winifred Vimbelo to come forward, please. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, I request Professor Anas Bayaga, the supervisor of the candidate, to present her to the congregation. Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, I present Spokazi Winifred Vimbilo to the congregation with her thesis entitled Exploring Humanizing vocational pedagogy in the teaching of mathematics in engineering-related subjects at TVET colleges. The purpose of the study was to determine whether humanizing pedagogy could transform the teaching of mathematics at TVET college. The findings indicate that the teaching mathematics through humanizing pedagogy could indeed transform the teaching of mathematics as mathematics teaching could incorporate social justice issues helping students to question injustices in mathematics classroom and use maths to address social issues re relevant to them. The implication of these findings is that lecturers need to know how to acquire deep understanding of social injustice issues so that their students can use maths as an analytic tool to question injustices. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Education on Sipokazi Winifred Vimbelo. I confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Education on Sipokasi Winifred Vimbelo.
Madam Chancellor, this concludes the conferring of qualifications in the Faculty of Education. I now request the Acting Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences, Professor Zoleka Soji, to present the candidates for doctoral degrees. Madam Chancellor, I have the privilege to present to you candidates for the doctoral degrees in the Faculty of Health Sciences. I request Professor Cindy Way James and candidate Violet Kester Chiganya to come forward, please. Madam Chancellor, I request Professor Cindy Way James, the supervisor of the candidate, to present her to the congregation. Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, I present to the congregation Violet Kester Chekanya a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Nursing with her thesis entitled Educational Interventions for Primary Caregivers Related to Infection Prevention and Control in Stroke Patients in a Rural Setting of Mutasa District, Zimbabwe. After a brief hospital admission, stroke patients are discharged home with many of them under the care of inexperienced primary caregivers, thus exposing the patients to the possibility of chest, skin, and urinary tract infections. This study aimed to develop and validate educational interventions for primary caregivers to prevent and control these infections. Results from an exploration of caregiver knowledge and practices of stroke patient care relieved a knowledge gap with caregivers, and that the village health workers seldom disseminate stroke patient care information to the caregivers. A review of the developed intervention in the form of a job aid confirmed its effectiveness in improving and standardizing caregiver competence in preventing and controlling infections among home-based stroke patients. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree of Doctor of Nursing on Violet, Violet Kester Chiganya. I confer the degree of Doctor of Nursing on Violet Kesta Chikanya. I request Professor Magnolia Nobositole and candidate Jane Wagiti Ndungu to come forward, please.
Madam Chancellor, I request Professor Magnolia Ngobositole, the supervisor of the candidate, to present her to the congregation. Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of myself and Dr. Andrew Gibbs, I present to the congregation Jane Wagitin Dumbu, a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Psychology, with her thesis entitled called Developing an Online Sexual Violence Prevention Interventions with High School Learners. The study explored the feasibility, acceptability, and challenges of co-developing an online group-based participatory violence against women and girls intervention for adolescents. From the perspectives of experts and adolescents, the co-development process was guided by the six essential steps for the quality intervention development framework. The findings showed that co-developing and providing group-based participatory violence against women and girls prevention interventions online is shaped by a complex set of factors that impact on the possibilities for the transformative communication online. Adolescents will play a pivotal role in the reimagining of participatory interventions online over time. Three international peer-reviewed journal articles and two international conference proceedings have been produced from this work. Congratulations. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Psychology on Jane Wagiti Ndungu. I confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Psychology on Jane Wagiti Ndungu. I request Professor Louise Stroud and candidate Zukiswa Zingela to come forward, please.
Madam Chancellor, <laughs> Madam Chancellor, I request Professor Louise Stroud, the supervisor of the candidate, to present her to the congregation. Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Dr. Johan Kronier, Professor Max Fink and myself, I present to the congregation Suki Swazengela, a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Psychology, with a thesis entitled Catatonia as a manifestation of serious mental illness, prevalence, presentation, management, and outcomes in a mental health unit. This research study applied deductive reasoning and a positivist paradigm approach with a mixed quantitative and qualitative method to investigate catatonia, a potentially fatal psychomotor disorder. The experience of persons with catatonia was explored from the beginning to the end of the catatonic episode and included neglected areas such as patient psychological experiences, assessment, prevalence, presentation, management, treatment outcomes, and the psychological experience of catatonia were investigated through a prospective, descriptive, triangulation approach. Data was collected using screening tools for catatonia, such as the Bush Francis Catatonia Rating and Screening Scales and the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual 5. Clinical notes and participant reports were also used. This research study highlighted the prevalence of catatonia, the importance of effective screening of patients for catatonia across all acute settings, the need for training of both medical and nursing personnel in the assessments of catatonia, and the effective implementation of interventions, resulting in significant outcomes. The descriptions of catatonia at an emotional, cognitive, and behavioral level were also highlighted including the need to develop psychological strategies and targeted psychological interventions to complement current management strategies. Five noteworthy publications emanated from the study, all yielding new knowledge of catatonia with potential applications at a regional, national, and global level. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Psychology on Sukiswa Zingela. I confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Psychology on Zukiswa Zingela. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, this concludes the conferring of qualifications in the Faculty of Health Sciences. I now request the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Humanities, Professor Pamela Maseko,
to present the candidates for doctoral degrees. Madam Chancellor, I have the privilege to present to you candidates for the doctoral degrees in the Faculty of Humanities. I request Professor Subeshni Moodley and candidate Manfred and Twikofi Asuman to come forward, please. Madam Chancellor, I request Professor Subeshni Moodley, the supervisor of the candidate, to present him to the congregation. Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, I present to the congregation Manfred Antwi Kofi Asuman, a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Media Studies, with his thesis entitled Participatory Communication as a Tool for Women's Empowerment, a study of five community radio stations in northern Ghana. This project studied women's empowerment through community-focused mass media media systems. The study found that community radio improves the livelihood of women in northern Ghana significantly by providing them with health-related information and new information on agriculture and food production. The study also found that through community radio, women's interest in politics is heightened because they are enabled to stay in touch with their elected leaders and to hold them accountable on budgetary decisions and the spending of tolls and taxes collected. The study proposed a framework to assist in the implementation of communication for development projects which aim to empower women in rural areas such as northern Ghana. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Media Studies on Manfred Antwi Kofi Asuman. I confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Media Studies on Manfred Antwi Kofi Asuman. I request Professor Gavin Bradshaw and candidate Onga Mamdimka to come forward, please. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, I request Professor Gavin Bradshaw the supervisor of the candidate to present him to the congregation. Madam Chancellor, I request, um, excuse me. Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to present to the congregation Ongama Mtimka, a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Political Studies with his thesis entitled A Political Economy of Transformation in Nelson Mandela Bay, a Critical Analysis of the Construction Sector since 2005. This thesis reviews the political economy of transformation within the construction sector in Nelson Mandela Bay to contribute to the advancement of knowledge within the field of South African political economy. By focusing 
on a specific economic sector. The, the study adds a nuance to the debates about the role of the state in the economy. It details the rise and fall of small business forums using a grounded theoretical approach and dissects various elements of the narrative in line with ongoing debates over the nexus between politics and business, as well as the role of interest groups in pluralist political systems. It makes a considerable contribution to the field. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Political Studies on Ongama Ndimka. I confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Political Science on Ngama Ngama Ntinka. I request Dr. Sarisha Pillay and candidate Babalo Yegani to come forward, please. Madam Chancellor, I request Dr. Sarisha Pillay, the course supervisor of the candidate, to present him to the congregation. Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, I present to the congregation Babalo Yekani, a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Public Administration, with his thesis entitled the effectiveness of monitoring and evaluation strategies in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, a case of Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality and Buffalo City Metropolitan Municipality in the Eastern Cape. The study investigates the effectiveness of monitoring and evaluation strategies employed in the Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality and Buffalo City Metropolitan Municipality in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The study revealed ineffective M&E strategies and inadequate organizational support to sustain best practices in these two municipalities. The bleak findings depicted a linear relationship between the municipality's leadership failure to implement the performance management system among its workforce and an exponential increase of COVID-19 cases and fatalities in these municipalities. The study could potentially empower municipal employees with tailored work experience that is relevant for the current and future slow and fast onset disasters. Madam Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Public Administration on Babalo Yegani. confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Public Administration, 
on Babalwa Yekani. Madam Chancellor, this concludes the conferring of qualifications in the, in the Faculty of Humanities. I now request the Acting Executive Dean of the Faculty of Law, Dr. Lynn Biggs, to present the candidates for the doctoral degrees. Madam Chancellor, I have the privilege to present to you a candidate for a doctoral degree in the Faculty of Law in absentia. I request Professor Patrick Rankin to come forward, please. Madam Chancellor, I request Professor pa Patrick Rankin, to, the supervisor of the candidates, to present her to the congregation. Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, I present to the congregation Foluke Mary Dare, a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Laws Public Law, with a thesis entitled The Legality of Anticipatory Self-Defense Against a Maritime Cyber Attack. This study analyzes the international law principle of anticipatory self-defense against the emerging threat of maritime cyber attack with a focus on Article 51 of the United Nations Charter and relevant law of the sea instruments in order to identify the challenges associated with applying this principle in the context of maritime cyber security. It concludes by stressing that the uniqueness of the emerging threat of cyber attacks against maritime security needs to be taken into account when assessing the lawfulness of actions taken by states to prevent these attacks. Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, um, I request you to confer the de degree of Doctor of Laws, Public Law on Mary Dare in absentia. I confer the degree of Doctor of Laws, Public Law, on Foluke Mary Dare in absentia. Madam Chancellor, this concludes the conferring of qualifications in the Faculty of Law. As we draw this graduation to its close, on behalf of the congregation, I'd wish to thank our graduates, parents, and other guests for their interest in the university and for their presence at this graduation ceremony. I would also wish to thank our academic and administrative staff. Today we've had full house. Everyone is present. And all of you, Vice Chancellor, are the ones who makes, make a difference. 
for the students and for the university as a whole and for this community, and I would argue for Africa as well. So I'd also, in, as I say thank you, thank the performers for their respective contributions. As Nelson Mandela University, we strive to change the world. 2020 and 2021 brought this our rallying cry in sharp relief as the world changed rapidly around us. As graduates, you have risen to all that 2022 brought to the fore. You've demonstrated that commitment, will, determination, and tenacity, that with all of that, success is possible. So once again, I congratulate you. You've made us all proud. I, I wish all our graduates well as you journey forth to wherever the next phase of your life path takes you. I, I trust that you will retain an identity, as I said earlier, that clearly defines you as a graduate of Nelson Mandela University. I'd like you to stand, all the graduates to stand, and just take a bow, look at the community next to you, look at the academic staff. Now, if you weren't masters and doctoral students, I would have asked you to toss your hats in the air. I don't know if you want to do that as well. Just celebrate and just throw up your hat and try to catch it directly. Thank you. By virtue of the powers vested in me as chancellor of the university, I now declare the congregation dissolved. I request the congregation to stand for the singing of the national anthem and to remain standing while the academic procession leaves the hall. Kosi si keleli Afrika, malupakani su pondolwayo, iswai mitanda so yetu kosi si kelela tina. Lusa United we shall stand 
Let us live and strike for freedom in South Africa.